Sligo now, where a group of school children at Monaster Aden have produced a fascinating documentary which tells the story of the train which used to run through their village, but which they lost in the 1960s. The Balhadarin's Kilfree Branch Railway Line opened on November 2nd, 1874 and closed on 2nd of February, 1963. It's the story of a train line now long gone, but one which had a huge impact on the lives of people who lived along it. And the story of the train from Balahadreen to Kilfree is told by children from 3rd to 6th class at St Aidan's National School in Monaster Aidan in Sligo, a bright bunch who were able to teach me a thing or two about making films. I did some of the camera work in Bernie Tynion's interview and I did the animation. Tell us about the animation. I loved your little train going across. Uh, well, we, it was, that wasn't very easy to make the animation. We had to do a lot of drawing first and then we have to move up bit by bit and uh, we have to take double pictures each time on each scene. The children and their teachers put a lot of work into capturing an important piece of local history. They managed to get their hands on old cine footage and interviewed many people who shared memories and stories with them, including one of their grannies. My granny was saying things like, you know, the, they couldn't imagine life without the train. It was everything to do with it. Like, when you were getting up in the morning, the train got you up in the morning, you had to be at school before it passed your house again. Well, it started at Balladreen, then it went on to Edmundstown, and um, it went to Island Road Station, it is near Mastodon, and then it met up with the main line at Kilfrey. And how long did the journey take? The journey was about 40 minutes going one way, but coming back, it was about 30 minutes because it was the decline. And would many people have used the train every day? Oh, a lot of people would have used the train every day because they could go to Balladreen to do the shopping in the morning and come back on the evening train, yeah. And how much would it have cost them? It would have cost them all two and six. Guard on the train was just a blunt, but he lived there. Now, you could send for anything with him. He used to bring bread out on the train from the bakery in Balladreen that used to make turnovers that will never be replaced. <laughs> Those people went on that train and said they never came back. And those people, the very last of them, I see my father talking about an old man that lived in the village over there. He had five or six sons. And they were big, big, strong men. And he met the train one day, he was coming along, kept on the side, and he cursed it down to hell <laughs> for all the fine men it had exported. And he meant every word of it, he was left on his own. Now the house where Christy Plunkett lived and worked is the home of one of the young filmmakers. Christy Plunkett was the guard on the train that came through the station. This was his house and now it's mine. He lived here with his wife Annie Plunkett who sold the tickets. She sold the last ticket to Goosey Moran on the 1st of February 1963. Who did you interview? Um, Leo Plunkett because his dad was the guard on the train and his mum was, she done three jobs actually, she was the ticket seller, the signal worker and she actually opened and closed the gates as well. And Leo came down just to visit his mum and dad's grave and we went, we interviewed him then when he came down. The last ticket was issued to Goosey Morden and um, that was the last ticket. There were well printed tickets, Island Road to to Bella and that was it and uh, she shoved it in then to a small printing press for the date that printing press was changed every morning quite a simple operation although good for its time um, she walked out of the small booking office and um, without much ado she just said I'm finished I always remember it I thought it was a very good speak Bernie time and we interviewed her because she lives right beside where the track used to go by you can actually still see where it went and uh, she was telling us how uh, the chickens used to be out in the railway line and the train would come along and then it was bye-bye chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Towie, the, the 
people that were going on the train would bring their bags and uh, she had a cafe and they'd leave them in their cafe, go to a pub and have a few drinks to come back again and eat something in her cafe and then they'd go on the train and Miss Stowey said it was very sad because most people that went never came back again. I did camera work when I got it up there, of course. Um, I did animation and um, that was fun. And um, I interviewed two people, Father Flynn and Naomi McLaughlin. Tell us about Father Flynn. Father Flynn, he was, he's a retired parish priest now. He used to be parish priest of Ballymote. He gave us footage of um, the few days before the last train went. And he was very surprised that the, the train had gone because it was kind of part of his life. We got into the train, Father Cawley, who was a priest in the college, and Father Keegan who also taught in the college at the time. They came with me on the train. We got on it then and we went down to Kilfree and we took a picture of Island Road Station. And uh, when we got to Kilfree then, we walked up and down for a little while until the, the other train came from Sligo, the main line train going from Sligo to Dublin. And uh, when that had passed, we waited until they turned the engine around and set back again for Bella, for Bella Dream. Al O'Dealy remembers the last train and the last mailbag brought by the train from Bala Dream to Kilfrey. I remember the last train from Bala I was honoured to bring the mail to Kilfrey and I handed the last mailbag to Christy Plunkett in February 1963. Ballet Dream's solicitor Dermot Nealon recalls the last train and how his father Paddy recorded the day on a cine camera. I was a, a very small boy at the time but I remember the day very well and I remember the crowds of people that were there and the scramble to get on the train. And the, the, the carriages were compartmentalised and not like you have open carriages today. There was a corridor and little sections. And I remember being in one of those with my brother and my, and my friends. And we went to kill free and back. And it was, a, it was a great occasion. It was a sad occasion for a lot of people as well. And uh, uh, obviously the train has never been replaced and it's, it's missed a, a great deal now from the area. With fascinating old footage, the children's DVD goes beyond the story of the train itself to include a major event, the blizzard of 1947. And it all came about thanks to the Fish project, which brought film into their school's curriculum. It brought out their skills, their artistic skills. Sometimes doing animation, that's an artistic skill. Doing a storyboard, artistic skills. Writing up a script, it's, a, it's an English exercise where a child takes a few characters and writes, writes a script for that. Picking a location, looking at the photographs of locations, and going out, finding the costumes, finding the, the props. All this is developing the child's skills, their artistic skills. All these subjects that we are doing in school can be done through this project, Fish. We're not really filmmakers, we're educators. And anything that develops the education and the personality and the overall development of the pupil is really good for them. But the benefits are much more widespread. Sales of the DVD are helping pay for a new extension to the school. And for local people and those who have long left the area, it has had an immeasurable impact. I don't think you could estimate what it meant to all people. There's at least two generations of people who we'll never remember this railway. And for people like me, and even older than me, if we have sent this uh, DVD away to them, and they just sat and watched it over and over and over again, because they saw people on it that they had forgotten. <laughs> we saw the, the crew of the train that was so helpful. We put them in DVDs and they're all they're going everywhere now. They're going to England and America and Australia. They're going all over the world now. And how does that make you feel? It's very good and it, it's a great accomplishment for us. For a, school, a small school like her and a small village like Monastradon to 